BYD have got 40,000 engineers and technicians working for their company in R&D, research and development. Uh, it's a huge number, much bigger than a lot of companies of a similar size, uh, simply because the industry that they are, they, they find themselves in has such great demand, as I'll get into in a minute, and I'll give you some numbers. Uh, so they're trying very, very hard to make vehicles that we all want, and they're doing very well at that, uh, whilst legacy brands like Toyota, Honda, could you say Fiat? Then they're owned by Stellantis. I think they're kind of pushing a bit, aren't they? Uh, they're falling well behind legacy brands. I suspect that Toyota and Honda thought that this big electrification thing from the governments around the world was kind of a big bluff. So they still, to this day, haven't gone all in with EVs and just committed fully to, to this new future that we're, we're definitely going into. Uh, so the world is now desperately in need of batteries, and I'll go into the numbers, hence why we now have North Volt in Europe, which is doing really, really well, and BYD also, they make their own batteries, and CATL, or cattle, and then I got lectured in the comments for calling them cattle, but CATL, uh, which remains the world's largest battery manufacturer. Ma manufacturer. They need 18,000 engineers in their R&D team. Let's talk about the global battery bottleneck, because it's all about the batteries. Uh, that is the big bottleneck. The International Energy Agency, reports that in 2023, 750 gigawatt hours of battery storage went into EVs alone. Uh, that's without all of the other batteries that were created for things like phones and e-bikes and scooters and laptops and things like that. So that was just 750 in, uh, in, in EVs, electric vehicles. And that went from five gigawatt hours globally, globally for all batteries of all types for all devices in 2010. So we went in 14 years from 5 gigawatt hours to, for everything, to 750 gigawatt hours just for electric cars. The rest, I actually don't know the figure for the rest, I couldn't figure out exactly what that was reliably, so I just left that out. So we're well over 150 times now the amount of battery storage as, you know, from 14 years ago. It's crazy what's going on. So this is the bottleneck. This is where that's coming from, that sentence. Uh, where are the people that can design batteries and improve them? Who has the education in this technology? And how do you all get them all in one place and then, you know, give them all a job? All the people in the world that can improve upon battery technology simply don't meet that demand that we're in, basically. Even if you pay them loads of money and they're, all these engineers are employed in one place, there's just not enough. Uh, educated people to to really to make this this technology become better quicker. So the brains trust is too small. Literally, uh, BYD the CEO said that the uh, one of the engineers in CATL one of the engineers they actually said the same thing too. Uh, so it's not just me saying that. Uh, the manufacturing of the new battery tech is also scaling up too slowly. Even though it is insane uh, how much. Uh, more, how many more batteries we're making these days. It's frightening, really. It is still too small. Europe needs to double its capacity at least by 2030 to meet any of the, the targets that they've set. And China also needs more than that uh, to, to meet the demand to sell the rest of the world because most of the world's EVs uh, come from China, basically, and all the batteries. So this is why CATL need 18,000 engineers. They uh, simply need them because they're hoping to service the world's automotive industry. Uh, you know, but battery tech is on the only thing outside of politics that is thwarting progress. The only thing. Uh, it is also a clear indicator of the complexity and depth of the technology involved in batteries. People don't really understand batteries. Uh, you know, they scratch the surface, they don't really understand what's going on. And after years of making these videos, I'm still a bit confused. Honestly, battery chemists are incredibly clever people. A whole team of people actually is needed to make batteries. The field of energy storage is highly interdisciplinary, uh, spanning chemistry, physics, material science, software development, and uh, yeah, the sheer number of people working at CATL in these fields reflect the enormity of the challenge. Batteries are not just about lithium-ion cells anymore. They really are. That was around from the 80s, I think. Uh, engineers are researching next-generation technologies like solid-state batteries, uh, semi-solid-state batteries, um, sodium-ion batteries, even lithium-sulfur cells, all of which require deep expertise and you know, collaborative work, really.
and this takes time. Even if you put, you know, 100,000 engineers in one room, it will take so long to get to a point where the battery is not thwarting the progress of EVs anymore. So that's what's going on. Fascinating stuff. Uh, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my videos if you like, and please put any thoughts that you have in the comments. And uh, I'll be hanging out in the comments when this video goes live for a few hours. So yeah, thank you very much.